Good afternoon. My name is Luigi Fernandes from the Universidade Federal do Recôncavo da Bahia, Brazil, and I will present the work Flaked Access to Cut Tree and Dig Soil. The instruments known as Flaked Axe are laid with studied in Brazil and comprised a lot white like polished eggs which are easily reconciled by lay people and are often found on museums and private collections. The flaked axes are barely present on archives and the field studies published interpret them as unfinished artifacts that were abandoned before the publishing stage due to a flaking accident or another unknown reason. These assumptions contradict what is found on sites associated with the other two archaeological context, which occupied a large area of Neuades, Brazil. This archaeological context belonged to ceramist groups and is characterized by large ring-shaped villages with permanent occupations lasting between one to three generations, similar to the contemporary indigenous village on the valley of the Xingu River. Chronologically, the sites extended for 500 years between the 19th and 14th centuries AD, disappearing before the start of the European occupation of the Americas. The most constant and remarkable aspect of this context lies in their burials. The Buddhists were placed in large piriform funeral urns right after the time of death in fetal position and then buried inside the villages. The distribution of Aratu sites occupies a large portion of Central East Brazil and includes the San Francisco River Cruise. Regarding the presence of flaked axes, 25 sites have been identified so far, and the most studied area is on the western portion of the state of Bahia, where the mine site Pirajiba is located. This site represents a large settlement where 140 burials have been identified, and more than 500 flaked axes have been recovered alongside other remnants accomplishing an assemblage with more than 15,000 lithic artifacts. The source of silicified sandstone and flint, the raw material utilized to produce the axes, are locally abundant and easy to access. The flaked axes have a constant technomorphology, which two faces conform into the boot opposite to the edge and write a left-shaped profile delimited by two flanks. The production technique consists of flaking and picking. The boot and the flaking are flaked and picked, while the edges are flaked. By analyzing the over 500 flakes, flaked eggs recovered on the Pirajiba site, it was possible to recognize a dynamic life of these artifacts, constantly modifying throughout time. This way, five technical stages can be described as follows. First, unfinished, without picking into flanks and boot. Second, finished, with few accidental flakes on the edge caused by the use. Third, half life, with accidental flakes caused by intensifying the use. Forty, reconstructed, with reflaking of the edge so that the instrument keeps in projected functionality. 50. Exhausted. When the edge reflaking exhausts the volume of the instrument, making it useless for its projected function, thus causing in the reach the end of its lifespan. Because of the use, a series of wear marks appear on the instrument. The most frequent and evident are brightness, rounding and striation on the edge. Sometimes there are brightness patches on the flanks and the boots, which are related to hafting. Observing the edges, it is easy not to see that the wear traces show a great level of intensity. Upon macroscopic magnification 10 or 20 times, the brightness and striations could be photographed in detail. Boot 
Flint and silicified sandstone eggs present these same marks with the same intensities. With further studies, the discovery of flaked axes in other Aratu sites, 400 km away from the Pirajiba site, revealed a surprising and unprecedented fact. The use of granite and basalt rocks commonly destined for polishing and unsuitable for flaking for the production of the semi-flaked axis. The study of the granite and basalt edges evidence the same intense wearing traces. Brightness, rounding and situation identified in the previously studied flint and salicified sandstone eggs. It seems that the use of the axis was the same regardless of raw material which caused the same intense wear trace visible to the naked eye. According to ethnographic data, the heavier tasks taking place on the villages were linked to agriculture practices. Thus, an experimental archaeology program was developed, consisting of chopping trees and digging soil using the flaked axis. Instrument replicas were produced using the same raw materials, techniques, and methods of the archaeological eggs. On the manufacture of the flaking was kick, however, the picking was slow and could be evaluated during the production. For example, a picking of 40,000 strikes in 1 hour and 20 minutes only generated a loss of 32 grams of real material. Lastly, the hafting was done according of the print patches identified on the boot and flanks of the archaeological artifacts. The experimental eggs were inserted into a splitting on the haft and secured with cotton strings. Two basic parameters were established for a controlling and the experiments time and number of strikes. Soil was excavated with continuous sequence of 500 strikes, with a few minutes interval for rest and observing the formation of wear trace. To shoot trees, the sequence were of 400 strikes. All observations were made with the naked eyes. The photographers were taken with digital camera and the picture was digitally manipulated. When digging soil, visible wear trace quickly formed, usually before 2000 strikes or around 12 minutes, regardless of ray material, around 20 minutes or approximately 3500 strikes, the wear trace reached their maximum intensity. On the images, we see the final appearance of some of the experiments. First, flint flaked eggs to dig soil after 28,000 strikes in 1 hour and 50 minutes. Second, silicified sandstone axe to dig soil after 21,000 strikes in 2 hours and 35 minutes. Third, granite axe to dig soil after 20,000 strikes in 2 hours and 2 minutes. For chopping wood, the results were different. The white traces were only visible on flint and were very weak and marginal on the edge. On the image, we see an example of a flaked X after 8,500 strikes that lasted 8 hours and 18 minutes. The explanation lies on the edge shattering, while on the soil the edge has little shattering and the fragments were short. On wood, the opposite happened. The fragments were constant and removed a lot of matter from the edge, thus suppressing the formation of brightness, rounding and situations. Some bright areas also appeared on the experimental instruments. After the experiments, we compared the experimental tools with the archaeological tools within each real material category flint, silicified sandstone, and granite. The results were congruent on the formation, intensity, and location of the wear trace. 
just pointing that the faked axes were rafted and used for chopping trees and dyeing soil for agriculture purpose. Thank you very much.